such things as we're going live on YouTube. And let me get that shared screen. And we'll get started. So good morning, folks. I am so glad to be with you all. And today is our Sunday. It's the last week before Easter. It's Passover for those who are celebrating in the Jewish tradition. It's also the Trans Day of Visibility on March 31st which is the only day of the year when you can actually see your minister. The rest of the time I'm invisible. <laughs> for those of you who read the newsletter, that is not a new joke, but <laughs> for the rest of you, <laughs> we are going to be doing one of our welcoming congregation worships today. So it's wonderful to have you with us and our opening will be number 1053, How Could Anyone? The words will be on your screen. Pastor Elizabeth, you're muted. you. <laughs> it was going to be halfway through the welcome before I, I saw that that was the case. So once again, good morning and welcome to the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Indiana, Pennsylvania. I'm the Reverend Elizabeth Mount and I'm so happy to welcome you into our online space. So on behalf of the entire congregation, thank you for tuning in. Our YouTube channel is at Pastor Elizabeth Mount, and you can search for that or go to youtube.com slash C slash Pastor Elizabeth Mount. For many of us, seeing one another's faces is an important part of our connection on Sundays. So if you're here in the Zoom room and you're comfortable doing so, Leaving your video on so people can see you is a wonderful form of community. We always like to note that if you don't have a camera or if you're afraid that worshiping at home might make you feel so comfortable that you'll forget you're visible on camera, you can leave the video off, no one will mind. One other feature that you should note in Zoom, there's a little chat bubble, it's right about here on your screen. Um, we use the chat feature for our greetings, our chalice lighting ritual, and for joys and concerns. So feel welcome to join us during those parts of the service. The First Unitarian Universalist Church of Indiana, Pennsylvania is a member congregation of the Unitarian Universalist Association where self-governing congregations united in a web of mutuality which creates the denomination. We have neither creed nor doctrine. Rather, we teach that individuals have both the right and the responsibility to discern and follow their own spiritual paths. We come together to support and assist one another on our personal journeys and to build the beloved community together. So I invite you to stay after the service for conversation We'll open up the microphones for a coffee hour and place you in small groups in breakout rooms so folks can check out, check in about how you're feeling, what's on your hearts and minds, whatever you feel called to talk about. Um, a special thank you. I want to just take a moment and especially thank Ruth Thomas and our wonderful gardening help 
um, folks did some cleaning up in the beds around the church yesterday. And it was a lovely sight to behold if you have a chance to go by and just enjoy the daffodils and take a little walk through the side yard. I think you'll enjoy it. We will be having, we hope, you all keep staying cautious and calm and slightly distant from one another. And we are hoping to have Easter egg coloring and an egg hunt next Saturday. Um, should we stay below our 10 cases per 10,000, per 100,000 cutoff? Um, right now we're hovering right around there. So <laughs> keeping us all on edge a little bit, but we are hoping for a bit of a distanced, but three-dimensional Easter celebration. So keep those fingers crossed. And we are one step closer to having outdoor worship services. Uh, Eric Barker helped us to put in a Wi-Fi extender. You can now get uh, Wi-Fi all the way through the side yard and even down into the lower yard of the church. So we should be able to use that for both religious education and worship in the coming months. And that, those are all of our special announcements. And at this time, I invite you to take a breath and just settle yourself into a spirit of worship. Our call to worship is by Mandy McGlynn. In honor of the Passover celebration. I am the daughter of Miriam. She taught me how to dance over my freedom without stepping on the bodies of my would-be captors. She taught me to walk headlong into impossible waters, to lead a crowd through the narrow place with utter faith that it will hold long enough for us to get free. She taught me how to tie my sandals for a long unknown journey and most of all, she taught me by doing more than telling how to quietly pack tambourines in the terrifying dark of night when we barely have space to carry sufficient food and water and blankets to last us through the miles ahead. She taught me that it's not enough to scrape by and survive. We must also be willing and prepared to dance with joy when liberation arrives. We must believe so deeply in our souls in the arrival of that time that we place those timbrels in our packs and pray to the Holy One to send us food. And now let us light our chalice together.
So if you have a chalice or a candle, you can light its flame now and type the flame is lit and where you are joining us from in your chat box. And let us speak the words of our chalice lighting together. We light this chalice flame whose flickering light reminds us how to dance with joy for our freedom and to delight in rainbows of color, reminding us that spring Blessed be. Our time for all ages is not quite narwhal by Jesse Sema. Good morning. Today we are celebrating celebrating Trans Visibility Day. And the book that I'll be sharing with you, Not Quite Narwhal, I think gives us a great analogy of how to celebrate this day. Not Quite Narwhal by Jesse Sima. Kelp was born deep in the ocean. He knew early on that he was different from the other narwhals. His tusk wasn't as long as everyone else's. He had different tastes in food and he wasn't a very good swimmer. But his friends didn't seem to mind. So Kelp decided he wouldn't either. That is, until he was swept away by a strong current. I wish I were a better swimmer. Kelp found himself at the surface, closer to land than he'd ever been before. High up on a cliff, he spotted a mysterious sparkling creature. It looked so familiar. It looked like Kelp. Kelp swam toward the land as fast as he could, which wasn't very fast at all, hoping that he could catch up with the creature that looked just like him. When he finally reached the shore, Kelp felt a little bit anxious. He'd never left the ocean. He was very nervous about walking for the first time, but the land creatures made it look so easy. Uh, oof, uh, it wasn't, ow. Eventually, he got the hang of it. Everything on land was strange and beautiful, but also kind of scary. Kelp began to think he might never find the creature that looked just like him. But as he stumbled out of the forest, Land narwhals? Actually, we're unicorns, and by the looks of it, so are you. Hmm. Kelp had never heard of unicorns before. They taught him all sorts of new things about his tusk. We call them unicorn. We call them horns. Wow. They introduced him to unicorn delicacies snow cones, of course, and they showed him how to gallop. There was no doubt the kelp was, in <laughs> fact, a unicorn. He was having so much fun that he didn't want to leave. <clears throat> but then he remembered all of his friends under the sea. Kelp missed them terribly. So he said goodbye to the unicorns and returned to the ocean. Uh, Come back soon. 
Kelp swam toward home as fast as he could, which wasn't very fast at all, hoping that the narwhals would still like him now that he was a unicorn. When he finally arrived, Kelp had butterflies in his stomach. Welcome home, Kelp. Hey. Kelp look, took a deep breath and told his friends the news. It turns out I'm not a narwhal. Of course you aren't. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a unicorn. We all knew that. They took it quite, quite well. Kelp was happy to be home, but now that he'd experienced life on land with the unicorns, he couldn't seem to forget them. <laughs> Did he want to be a, land, be a land narwhal with the unicorns or a sea unicorn with the, narwhal, with the narwhals? Kelp couldn't decide, but then he realized that maybe, mm, just maybe, he didn't have to choose.
So at this time, knowing that we are here together as one community, some of us are more unicorns, some more narwhals. Perhaps you are a little frog or even a little bit of a crab. But wherever you see yourself in this story, let us pass the peace and greet one another and share your blessings with one another. You might type in the chat, peace be with you, or namaste, bright blessings, salam, shalom, or blessed be. Peace be with you and blessings of love on this day. Our you you moment today is a story by Jonathan Chapman. Jonathan writes, recently, I ordered four foot tall rainbow bunnies for my church. Just after I hit order, I wondered, do we really need them? Do we really need such giant rabbits? But later that day, one of my parishioners sent me a picture taken in front of a local church on the lawn, an enormous banner with a picture of the Holy Family and the message, God's marriage equals one man plus one woman. Often people ask me why my church constantly hangs banners welcoming folks, in particular, the LGBTQ community. They wonder why we're always lugging out our rainbows. And this is why. Because you see, every church says everyone is welcome, but many make that a conditional welcome. You're welcome, but not your relationship, not who you love, or how you look, or how you think, or how you believe. Most churches don't put up banners like the one that I saw, but many aren't far off from sharing those same sentiments. Listen, people can think what they want and believe what they want. I don't have to agree with everyone, and they don't have to agree with me. But as long as there are congregations willing to limit God's welcome, ours will be working hard to widen that welcome. As long as there are church goers who question the depth of God's love, we'll keep hoisting our banners and hauling our doors that proclaim its breadth. And the truth is that we will fall short. We do, but we keep trying. Because you see, there are people in the world who wonder if God could really love them, if God could love them despite who they love. And in case that's you, yes, there's no despite about it. God could love you. God does love you. So does this church. So with thanks to Jonathan Chapman for his beautiful words and story, let us read together the words of our seven principles, reminding us of the common values we share. 
we honor the inherent worth and dignity of every person. Practice justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. Accept one another and encourage spiritual growth. Support the freedom to search for what is true and right in life. Ensure all have a vote about matters that concern them. Work for a peaceful, fair, and free world and care for planet Earth, the home we share with all living things. Our centering reading today is a blessing for the gathered community on Trans Day of Empowerment. When I am me, when I come into spiritual space, I am, I must be all of me. And together joined in this place, we are all, all of ourselves. We are blessed and may we be a blessing to one another. We are whole and may we be holy, offering holiness to one another by our presence. As we have been given courage to find ourselves, whether or not such searching was welcome, may we today honor all of us, all the parts of ourselves, parts that were brave, hearts that still hold fear, that small insistent voice inside, the hope that clung to love, the searching self that found the sparkle of a hidden gem, the truth of self which ached to bring forth the glowing facet of your beauty. All the pieces of you joining together have shaped who you are today. They are your core. And we are a community built from within, becoming, unfurling, enhancing, unveiling, acknowledging each sacred one of us uniquely present. We are invaluable, immeasurable, and unfailingly holy, as we have been at every stage of our journeys, from the moment of our birth, from each moment of rebirth or reawakening, we become vaster than imagination. We contain and encompass multitudes. We are possibility and what is beyond the impossible. This community, our cis and our trans community, we all hold the glory of all godliness and the joy of the springtime blossom, the power of the universe, and the stars endlessly becoming. I need not bless you for you are already a blessing made flesh and yet I bless you in return for you are a blessing to me. We acknowledge that we in our diversity are a united whole in peace and empower. Blessed be. And now, if you'd like 
to add a joy, a sorrow, a concern, or a hope. Please feel welcome to do so during our centering music. They will be incorporated into our pastoral prayer. This is I See You, the music video by Alex Pham from the Sanctuary Boston community. Now, let us join our hearts and our minds together in the spirit of prayer. Spirit of life and of love, you, creator and created universe, be with us in this time and space as we gather together to share in community the milestones of our living. Today, 
to hold space in our hearts for the weight of all that is difficult in the world. For more than a year that we have been online, feeling sometimes distant or disconnected from one another. May we hold each other in tender care. May we hold in our thoughts Josiah's nephew, Donnie, who had emergency surgery yesterday and hope for his healing and for the comfort of his family. Let us also hold in our concern, in our awareness, ongoing attempts to make our democratic processes less accessible. Our fifth principle clearly calls us to the work to affirm and promote the right of conscience of every person. In that spirit, we cannot be silent when we know that people are having a harder and harder time encouraging one another to show up to the poll, to be counted when they arrive, to be able to stand in those lines. May attacks on voting processes always fail as they should and must in a democratic nation. Yet while there are so many things to be concerned about, there is also space for hope. Patty offers the hope of a better future, that Jacob lifts his grades, and I know that there is wide care for Jacob in this community, not just hopes and thoughts, but also people who would love to offer some tutoring and some help with that. May this gathered community hold the support that is helpful for Jacob and his family. And may we give thanks for the good in life that Nana was finally able to visit her stepdaughter this just yesterday and that her husband is getting a vaccine right now. May we hold gratitude for scientists for the development of these vaccines, for Dorothy's gladness, and we are grateful and glad with you that you were able to see friends and family. Gratitude from Ruth Barkey being scheduled for a COVID vaccination this coming Friday. And from Ruth Thomas, who got to work in the sunshine yesterday with fellow UUs. While we are not all yet vaccinated, there are things we can do together safely enough. And that is a wonderful thing. We are grateful for the return of the blooming springtime which allows us to be outdoors together. We're so glad that Faye's eldest daughter and sister-in-law have found a townhouse house to buy in New Jersey. And that Judith and Juanita got their first COVID shots. And Ralph and Bob Billy's daughter 
had been vaccinated as well. And they offer a reminder to look at the moon for it is beautiful when it is full as it was last night. So for all the blessings which enrich our lives, May we hold room for gratitude and joy, for the beauty of the earth, the ever-changing seasons, the flowing gift of life. May we give thanks. In times of fragile hearts and tender sorrows, may we find comfort and strength. And may our hearts be healed. And may we be at peace. Amen and blessed be. We now come to the time of our morning offering when we give to the work of this congregation and those beyond. I'll let Lee Hendrick tell you about this month's offering. At the First UU Church of Indiana, we share the plate by giving a portion of every week's donations to an organization outside of the church. This is part of our congregation's mission to promote compassionate and responsible thought and action in the world by giving back to the community around us every week. So when you give this morning, know that you are making an impact not only for this congregation, but also in the wider community through our shared giving. You are welcome to give by PayPal by sending a donation to office at firstuu-indianapa.org, or you can send an email to that same address to find out how to set up a bank transfer or make a donation by cash or check with Holly, our office administrator. Um, I'm really excited to share with you that this month our Share the Plate recipient is Sisters PGH. Uh, it's, they are the uh, transgender centered drop-in space resource provider and shelter transitioning program based in Pittsburgh, offering outreach, accurate transgender education, trans inclusion training, advocacy, and emergency housing and shelter for transgender people of Pittsburgh. And they've been around for a couple of years and also have had a hand in organizing some like alternative pride events called People's Pride. That's really um, a, sort of an exciting alternative to some of what has been gotten really corporate. Um, and, and giving to Sisters PGH, uh, supports both our GLBTQ plus welcoming and anti-racism work by redistributing funds to an organization led by and primarily serving black trans women. And that feels like a really important thing for us to think about um, and for us to do as a community. And um, it is part of donating to an LGBTQ plus cause or organization is part of our ongoing commitment as a welcoming congregation. Uh, and so please give as you are able to the work of this church within and beyond our walls as we share in singing our offertory hymn. And our offertory hymn for this week comes from the First Unitarian Society of Denver. Do you ever wonder, is there something you can do to make this world a sacred space and live in truth? If you watch the birds, if you watch the bees, when you feel the sun, well, when you feel the breeze, you'll see they know what they're doing. You'll see, oh, oh, oh. what about you? What about you? What about Yeah. 
So this is Trans Day of Visibility, Trans Day of Empowerment. It's a day when we notice that not all people are created exactly the same as one another. I'm sure that comes as a surprise to you. <laughs> or perhaps not. See, I think most of us who have come to the Unitarian Universalist Church already came here realizing that maybe there's no such thing as normal. Maybe there aren't just binaries of this or that. Maybe there are more paths than we'll ever have lifetimes to walk down. Maybe that is all not just okay, not just tolerated, but wonderful. Part of what makes life beautiful. We are gemstones forged under pressure, cut, and yet those glittering facets made the more beautiful for it. Despite my mother being in the room, I'm going to tell a little story about her. It's really a storytelling on me. She comes out looking great. <laughs> but once upon a time, when I was older than I probably should have been to be asking such questions, I asked my mom, how come you only have weird friends? because you know, teenagers are charming like that. Um, so I said, why do you only have weird friends? Other people are normal. You don't have any of those friends. But my mom said, if you think someone isn't weird, you just don't know them well enough. There's no such thing as normal. That is not a thing in the world. Everyone has problems. Everyone has quirks. Everyone has strange things they do or think or believe. I only hope to be blessed with as charming a child as I'm sure I was for her. <laughs> but it's true, as I've grown up, I look around the UU church and I go, how come I only have weird congregants? But you know, I don't think anybody has normal congregants because I don't think there are normal people in this world. I have ceased to believe that the norm is anything more than a scientific baseline that describes no real person in the world. 
We're all weird. We're all wonderful. Weird and wonderful are paired because what makes you weird, what makes you strange, is what makes you magical. It's what makes you blessed and divine and diverse. And what is all creation? We can see from thousands upon thousands of years of evolutionary history, creation is trying to become more complex, to fill more varied niches. Where we are, if we are all the same, we fill only one need in the world. A body made up of all toes or all voices or all eyes is no body at all. We need all different kinds of cells, all different kinds of functions to be whole, not just as individuals, but as a human community. We need all of the weird parts for us to be whole and functional. So let go of that normative idea. On this trans day of visibility, let go of the idea that people who are choosing a different way are doing anything other than what they are supposed to do, what the universe has always wanted, which is more people doing more different things than you could ever imagine possible. And then when they do it, you realize it's not only possible, but wonderful. We do more of it. As the Olympics have existed, for now more than a hundred years in their current form. One thing that we've realized is it's not simply that human beings have become faster or stronger or better, but that there's a mental barrier. When someone turns one flip, we go, that's cool. I wonder if I could do it too. And then a few years later, when someone is turning two or three flips in the air, we realize that the barrier of what we believed to be possible has shifted. We are limited not so much by our physics, but by our imaginations. Speeds have gotten faster, crossing the barriers of timing for runners has always been as much a mental exercise as a physical speed barrier. We push boundaries because we are human. The Suez Canal, which is so recently blocked and in the news, is a line in the sand carved out because humans decided that it would be possible. We can see a blockage from space, but more than that, we can see from space the way that humans have changed the geography of the planet not just the Suez Canal, but great walls, buildings, the entirety of Central America's ecosystem is not random, but constructed for human civilization. Fruit trees created into vast forest gardens by ancient Mayan civilizations. Human beings are weird 
and wonderful and we push the boundaries of what is possible. And on this trans day of visibility, we need to see each other in all our possibility. And we need to know that this day, that every day we are called to stand up for one another, to be those warriors that hold the line on love, on welcome, on not just acceptance, but affirmation of gay and lesbian and bisexual and pansexual and asexual people, of trans and non-binary and agender and cisgender people of all genders. Every one of us is uniquely created. And none of us are a part of being PC, politically correct. When we are told that we are acting politically correct or speaking in a politically correct way, let's remember that no one here is a theoretical person. There are no thought experiments about human dignity because what we are doing is treating one another with respect and love and human compassion. We are all real. We are all beautiful. We are all miracles from the moment that we become living beings. And in that knowledge, how could we do less than to name one another, to be with one another, to love one another, and to welcome each other into community? This is the message not because it is Trans Day of Visibility, but because this is true every day. Whether it needs to be spelled out in giant Easter bunnies, whether it exists in sparkling rainbows above narwhals and unicorns, or whether you just know in your heart, we are all beloved, all welcome, all wanted. This church is big enough for all of us. Blessed be. Will you join me in extinguishing the chalice flame? We extinguish wish our chalice flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Blessed be. Namaste. Amen. Blessed be our final hymn, answering the call of love.
Benediction comes from words by Lori Walke. Everybody's in. Gracious God, some people think it's the glitter that makes the pride parade like heaven, pearly gates and streets of gold. Some people do not think the pride parade is like heaven for who would let all these people in? Surely there's some kind of form to fill out. One must be given clearance or at least abide by a dress code. Speaking of which, what is the dress code for heaven? What documentation is required? Of course, this is the strongest argument that the kingdom of heaven is like a pride parade for all are welcome. We don't get to decide who is in and who is out. Everybody's in. Everybody. And that's quite the parable, isn't it? That the kingdom of heaven is like a pride parade where all are welcome and love wins. We'll know it by the glitter and by the love. This will be heaven. Amen. And blessed be all you beautiful folks. If you'd like to stay for coffee hour, you are very welcome and we'll be dividing folks into groups. Um, if you're from Ligonier and you'd like to let me know, if you're from Latrobe, you're gonna end up in your own room by yourself, Dorothy. <laughs> No, I'm kidding, uh, but do let me know if you want to be in the Ligonier room in particular. <laughs>